Well, hello there and welcome to another edition of Warbird Wednesday. My name is Fred Bell. I'm the vice chairman of the Palm Springs Air Museum. And today we are wrapping up our tour of Italia. We are finishing up with Italia. Of course, my Orotund assistant, Greg Kenny, has gone out of his way to typecast me once again as uh, what am I? I am a capo. Greg, you're, you're going to sleep with the fish for doing this, Greg. I'm very disappointed, but uh, today he's got me all done up. I, you know, I'm almost, uh, this is almost a shame to take this one off, Greg. I just wear this one, but I think I'm going to lose it nonetheless. So we'll get this off. We'll toss this off camera. There we go. A nice catch by the Kenny. So today we're finishing up with, we've been nice to the Italians. And Greg, the other thing that I have done today is we don't normally celebrate the end of a particular aircraft line. But today, since we were doing uh, the country of uh, my family's origins, I couldn't help myself but go down to the Italian deli and get myself a, a little bit of original pepperoni and some aged provolone cheese, Greg. So these are like Scooby snacks for Italian, if I'm dating myself there. But uh, back when I was a kid, my mom, if I was sick, She'd get me a little pepperoni and she'd get me a little cheese and that would fix you all right up if you weren't doing good. Of course, now my daughter was saying, do not let him eat all that, but I'm going to eat one of it on camera. So we've been good to the Italians and the aircraft that we've reviewed in the series have all been actually pretty spectacular airframes and they, they were more than competent when you looked at the competitors either on European continent or any of the aircraft that were in the Allied Air Forces that were comparable at the time. Today though, Greg, we're gonna have to give the Italians a little bit of a hard time. This particular airplane, the Breda, the BA-88, the Lynx, or the Lynx as it was called. Now, this aircraft, the other aircraft that we were looking at were very competent when you looked at either the Axis aircraft that were on the European continent at that time, or any of the aircraft that were in the Allied Air Forces, they, they were comparable. This airplane though, Greg, is the most spectacular failure of a production aircraft in World War II. You can argue with me in the comments, there were aircraft that had prototypes, but they didn't make it into production. This aircraft actually did make it into production, and it was so bad, that it was literally gone within two years after it had been introduced. And I'm gonna get into that here now. The, uh, the Lynx was introduced in 1936, was its first flight. It, uh, it actually was introduced into military service in 1939. Now, here's the interesting thing. It was retired in 1941. So the aircraft was essentially brand new and it never really made it out of there. Uh, it, um, it, the build rate was very low. There were 149 aircraft built. The designers were Antonio per, Perizzano, I'm gonna, hopefully I didn't butcher that too much, and Giuseppe Panzeri designed the airplane. Now, the aircraft was promising, and I, we don't have a Lynx, so I'm gonna use a comparable aircraft, which is the uh, BF-110, or the ME-110, if you're later in the war with Allied pilots, describing it, but the BF-110 is a similar concept, and that was the uh, various air forces were experimenting, and I'll throw up a plan view, but you really, Greg, you need to throw up a plan view of the Lynx. So pre-war, the air forces, both the Allies and the Axis, were experimenting with these twin engine, in some cases twin tail, heavy fighters. And the idea was that they could fight their way through enemy air defenses, some of them were built out as ground attack aircraft. So they were, they were used in that role so they could drop bombs, they could fire rockets. Uh, some of them later in life had other uses, like the German twins, the heavy twins, they failed miserably. The, the BF-110 failed miserably in the Battle of Britain as a, as a day fighter, but it did very, very well as a night fighter. With the addition, it was big enough to add radar and do so and so forth. This particular aircraft never made it to that. So I'm gonna put this back on the spindle. So the Lynx was, follows a familiar history 
with the Italian aircraft that we profiled in that it was very, very promising at the outset. Uh, Furio Nicolot Doglio, I hope I didn't destroy his name, flew the aircraft pre-war, the Lynx, a single-tailed Lynx, to a number of speed records. And so the airplane initially performed extremely well. It had the problems uh, with, uh, with power plants. The Italians had trouble with, uh, with both um, the Alfa Romeo power plants and the Fiat. I'm going to throw it in here, Greg, the fix it again, Tony power plant, because the, uh, the, the Italians just could not seem to get the power plant issue sorted out, which is why we talked about they built a number of airplane or aircraft engines under license. But initially, this airplane set a number of speed records and did extremely well. Now, what happened was um, it, uh, when they started to play with the uh, adding military equipment, because remember, these were civilian. Most of these airplanes were tested in civilian aircraft, uh, in civilian livery, and then they converted them to military use. That is where the fun started. So when Antonio and Giuseppe set out to design this aircraft, they actually derived it from the BA-75. So it was, a, it was a design evolution. And the idea was to come up with this heavy destroyer type airplane. Now, this aircraft, when I talk about speed records, it was fast. This airplane clocked in at 329 miles per hour. At the time, it was the fastest twin in the world. So you can t see why the Italians got excited about it and, and were thinking about using it. Now, at 329 miles an hour, think about comparable interceptors from like 1936 to 1941. It's as fast as any of the interceptor fighters. So they got really excited about this airplane. And so they moved it on into production into the BA-88, the Lynx. And then what ended up happening was as soon as they started to fit it for North Africa, and what they did is they put sand filters on it, they started putting uh, bomb stores on it, they found out something really bad. They, they equipped two fighter groups, two squadrons with the airplane. And what ended up happening was the airplane became so unmanageable. Now think about this. Think about any time that we've built anything I can't imagine this, but in the comment section, you can think about this, where we actually deployed the airplane in squadron strength, got it to the squadrons, and the airplane performed so poorly that some of them couldn't take off. They literally couldn't get into the air, and some of them that did get into the air could not turn. That is what they ended up with with this airplane at a squadron strength, at the Lynx. So when it went out with the groups, they immediately realized that they had a problem. Now, what they did do after that is they actually shut down the production. They made some modifications to the airplane. Didn't work. Now, they restarted production, but the restart in production was primarily due to the fact that there were political pressure inside Italy with where the factory was located, and they didn't want to create political strife, so they kept the factory going and they, they actually continued to build the airplanes. But the airplane, by 19, late 1940, they realized that the airplane was simply unmanageable and was a death trap if you tried to turn the airplane uh, and it really anywhere you wanted to fly it. It, it just wouldn't fly. So uh, what they did do after that was they basically took the airplanes and they uh, spread them around the various Italian bases as decoys for other squadrons that were attacking the Italian airfields to go after these airplanes. So now think about that for a second. That That's what I'm talking about, how spectacular the failure was. Again, you have 149 airplanes that are completely useless and that you just have to sprinkle around airfields. Now, the comparable aircraft in its class, one of them was the French, the BR-690. The other one was the BF-110, which we have an example here, and the F the other one was the Focke-Wulf, the 187. We're kind of all in that same class, that what I would call uh, what would be termed the destroyer class or, or the heavy ground attack airplane. Uh, it, at that point, the aircraft petered out. But let's talk about the concept of ground attack for a second. 
if you were uh, doing any ground attack work, and we have a number of fighters that I'm standing with in, in, this, uh, in the European hangar here at the museum, if you were doing ground attack, that is really, really dangerous work. Whether you were doing it uh, with the Germans, we've talked about the losses, or the Italians, or the Americans, and ground attack never really went away. I mean, we were, uh, uh, whether it was in the Pacific, or whether we were fighting Korea, or Vietnam, wherever, if you think about the A-10, you could trace the lineage all the way back to these early aircraft, like the Lynx, that, that were designed to go in and slug it out and be fast uh, and, and get out of a, a combat zone uh, quickly. So what I want to do today, and I'm going to move into my... Greg has... First of all, it was teriyaki beef soda last week and this week he's he's <laughs> it is butter soda why not because if you're going to make a soda butter soda pure cane sugar with your butter butter soda which just sounds absolutely disgusting uh let's see 170 calories um 42 grams of sugar so there's quite a bit of sugar in this so maybe i just might have a sugar coma uh, there's a cash refund in California. This is Rocket Fizz. Uh, we've seen these guys before. So uh, they bottled this. As I said last week, there t comes a time when maybe you just shouldn't bottle something. I'm not sure that butter soda is a huge seller. The scary part about this is I see no fizz in this whatsoever. So we're going to go ahead and, and crack this. Oh, oh there's a little bit of uh, uh, pop there. Oh. There is a fizz, so we are uh, we haven't been compromised on the botulism uh, area. So, oh yes, that butter aroma. Uh, so today, the, what I want to salute is all the ground attack guys uh, that go all the way back on either side. That was a dangerous business. The concept goes back over 80 years, and today we have very very specialized machines like the A10. But along the way, with the links you could see how we could have a failure. But you ground attack folks, I salute you. Oh, wow, two weeks in a row, Greg. That'll curl, <laughs> yeah, that'll curl your hair. Oh man, that is just, again, I asked last week, why would you bottle something like this? Uh, customary second sip, as I say, that's the deal. Oh. Oh my goodness. Oh, Greg is chuckling again. I'm going to make you come on the camera and drink this stuff there, pal. That's that. Another, oh man, that's bad. Oh, and the after, the finish is even worse. Almost can't even finish this. It's so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah smack your lips there. So, um, a couple of interesting things about the Lynx. Uh, the pilot, uh, Furio, who I told you about, who set the world records in the mid to late 30s, he was actually um, killed in a, another airplane that we profiled, the C-202, in attack on Malta, and he was an ace. He, was a, he went on to be an Italian ace, but he was uh, killed in attacking Malta. Now, what happened to this airplane? This aircraft is, we can mark this as extinct. This airplane is extinct. The best that I could do is trace it back to where the Luftwaffe evaluated three of the airplanes. There's a, 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 some history there where they actually evaluated three of the airplanes. We know others were destroyed because they used them as decoys. Those aircraft are gone. We don't know what happened to them. They're not in a museum, and I cannot even, now this is where in the comments section, if you've got a sharp-eyed viewer here, if you know of where there's pieces or chunks sometimes of airplanes. If you know of where a, a Lynx airframe is, this uh, BA-88, we'd love to know it, share it in the comments. But the research that I did on this aircraft is, it is totally extinct. It does not exist anywhere in the world, which is probably good for Italian aviation because if you're gonna have the most spectacular uh, aircraft, military aircraft failure ever, you really don't want to leave around a smoking gun, Greg. You don't want to leave any witnesses. So the Italians did it right. They didn't leave any witnesses. 
Now, I am going to let you in on a little secret today. If you're watching Warbird Wednesday and you watched it to the end, we have a surprise coming and it is going to be wrapped around my gratuitous product placement. Uh, if all goes well, by the time you see this, uh, we should be preparing to bring the movie Memphis Bell to its new home at the Palm Springs Air Museum. And you can celebrate that. We are going to put up in the merchandise link the Build It Your Own movie Memphis Bell. And uh, Jason will send that out to you from the gift shop. That is a little secret. Now, the movie Memphis Bell airplane is a little bit different from our Miss Angela. Our Miss Angela is configured as a B-17G. This aircraft is configured as a B-17F, which is what the original Memphis Bell is. Now, before you affectionados go, oh yeah, well, it was a G, it is configured to look like an F, but it's not a B-17F, but it is very cool. It's gonna come live with us, and you need to keep checking back because you can find out what the heck we're gonna do with it. And hopefully check the channel because we're gonna send up our fighters to greet it and give it an escort in. So one of the opportunities you're gonna have is uh, hopefully some aerial video of our P-51s off the wing of that B-17, which I'm actually excited to see that. I think that's gonna be pretty cool when the airplane arrives on Saturday the 13th. So we're, we're gonna give you a little bit of heads up. Now, we cannot do all of this and bring in airplanes like the one I'm talking about without your donation. So if you can donate a few shekels in the donation line, we would appreciate that. If you come across us on Warbird Wednesday and you like what you see, forward it to a friend and subscribe to our channel. We'd love to have you as a subscriber. If you come across us on Facebook as well, like it, uh, like us on Facebook, give us a like, uh, give us a comment. If you have comments, we always like those. We're gonna do four more aircraft next in the next series. I'm gonna let you uh, uh, guess what those airplanes are gonna be. We're not gonna tell you, we're gonna surprise you, but we're gonna do another series of four more airplanes that are unique from another nation and we probably we're going to cover some interesting ones and like the links we're going to we're going to cover some aircraft that are just plain extinct they're gone from the world at this point my name is fred bell i am the vice chairman of the palm springs air museum have a great day